Hello everyone, welcome to Operations Management Unit number four. In unit number four, we're gonna be talking about the process strategy. So let's roll with it. So first of all, AI. today we're gonna be talking about how to design a process, how to make it more effective. Uh, in this case, there's different types of processes that um, we use according to the different products or services that we're gonna be having. So for example, here, uh, we have different processes like process focus, repetitive, product focus, and mass customization. So here we have to think what kind of product we have. So we're going to choose which product, which, which process could be um, better for, this, for this, this type, right? Let me pass this on there. So in this case, for example, here um, we have to took on... This one, I hope this one better. So in this case, for example, we have the processes focus. So in this case, for example, we have the process focus, which is low volume, high variety. So in this case, we have few processes, but they are all different. They have a very different output. So in this case, for example, here we have the hospital, right? Which we have. For example, the surgery, sick patients, baby deliveries, emergencies, they all go, but they are all different processes. So we cannot streamline them and and that's it. I mean, we have different outputs, okay? For each one of them, we'll have different outputs. We can use here maximization or optimization of the resources of the doctors because we can somehow, we can use some doctors for some things or nurses or some facilities for that. But ultimately, we're going to see all of their results are different, right? Then we have, for example, the repetitive focus, which is here, for example, we have, um, we have here, uh, this is, for example, the Harley-Davidson. We have a lot of inputs when it comes to engines, wheels, modules, or engines, wheels, etc. So we have all those inputs, but then, we make here a bottleneck. And what is this bottleneck? Few modules, that means the Harley Davidson, what they do is they put um, the engine, the wheels, let's say, or at least the frame, some parts of the engine, some parts of the wheels, and then they have, let's say, for example, um, let's say 50, 60% of the process is done until here, right, until here. And then, we are going to uh, customize them. So in this case, what we do is we start to change the things. We start to change, for example, some parts of the engine, some parts of the top, some parts of the design, and then we will have a different output. So we have many combinations of motorcycles, all right? Uh, here we have another one, which is a product focus. So here we have high volume, low variety. Bear in mind that this one we have a, the modules can change and we have a lot of variety. So in this case, for example, we have inputs, corn, potatoes, like, like chips, corn, potatoes, water seasoning, right? So in this case, they'll go here and then we put variations in terms of size, shape, and packaging. So maybe some things of the seasonings may change, but there are small things. So let's say with one potato chip, I can make the onion one, I can make the cheese one, I can make the whatever flavor you like. So in the end, it remains to be the same one. And then we have the mass customization, which is high volume and high varieties. Here's, for example, the, the Dell computers. We have a lot of inputs, but we also have many modules. Why? Because in the end, the consumers build their own, uh, their own computer. That's a, the policy of Dell, Dell computers, that you can go online and optimize it as any way you want, and they will assemble it according to what you need and what you want. So in this case, like I said, they have many components, but also they have many, many output versions. That is their competitive advantage. Your competitive advantage is having the product that you want. Okay, very good. So again, in this case, we have the process focus. Like I said, we have a making low volume, high variety. And we have repetitive focus. Like I said, we have some modules and then we optimize it well, we personalize it at the very end, and then the product focus, like I said, we have that one, and the mass customization. So pretty much what we can see here, and I want to show it to you. Here we have it. Hi. 
give me a second. Sorry, here we have it. it took me a second that I was I was lost a little bit. Then so in here, this here is here for example we have the different the different costs that each of the different costs and how it is gonna vary according to volume and variety. So for example here we have if we have low volume but high variety which is a process A we will see that because of the low volume the fixed costs are very little. So in this case we have let me highlight it here. You have this part is very low. The fixed costs are low, but the variation cost is what makes us increase. So in this case, most likely if we choose this method, low volume, high variety, likely the cost of the product is going to increase because of the variation. Customization costs. Now when we have a repetitive uh, process in this case we have the fixed cost got higher but then the variation cost is much lesser so in this case we have a little bit of that and then we have in the other one see if I can move it yes I can move it in this case we have for example high volume and low variety which is pretty much in this one which will be at some point will be the cheaper right which is we have fixed cost because we use the base for everything, but the variation is very little, so we don't spend much in changing, uh, in changing the, the the settings, right? So you can see there's always a point where they intersect. They intersect here. This this one's the low volume and high variety because they intersect in terms of a in terms of the fixed costs, right? They start to intersect. So here you have to take a decision. I want to go for the uh, for this for these ones. I want to go for a low volume or high variety, or I want to go for more repetitive one, or I want to go for high volume, low variety. So that means massive production, no changes, or few units, but they are all different. This one, in this case, for example, we're talking about, for example, luxury cars. Luxury cars like um, those handmade, like Lamborghini, like Ferrari, uh, Bentley. They go more for this option because they have to, they have low volume of production. They have only requirement of few cars, but the variety comes not so much in the model, but there's many, many features that you can customize as a consumer. You can customize, like, for example, the, the how to say, the seats and the dashboard. You can must customize many things, the color, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, we're talking about, for example, like I said, products that are more a, um, generic, like we talked about the, 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 the French fries, the chips, no? The chips in this one is more of producing the same thing. So in this case, again, uh, what we want to achieve and where we're going to recover it and how much it costs. Here we have, for example, like I said, this is the optimal, this is the cost that you're going to recover, but from here, this is basic cost that you need to recover, right? But from there, you'd have to decide which one is going to be your option. Now, this option of operation goes together with marketing. Why? Very simple because you're gonna choose also the strategy that you're gonna use for marketing. So that means in this case, I have to sell a lot of units for very little cost. In this one, I have to sell very little units for very high cost. And this one is just the average one, okay? Okay, very good. So hope that clears that. So in this case, again, this is what I was saying. Here we have to think which process of this one is the most recommended according to that one. Think of different products that you use not every day and think about which one will be most likely to, to use which process, okay? Very good.
So let's continue to the next one. So in this case, for example, uh, for any of doing these this, this processes, we have to design them. So we use some different tools to design them to make it more effective, depending again on the operation that you have or which one or what you want to focus on is the different one that you're going to do. So for example, here we have the, the flow charts. Here, for example, we have the flow charts. We use it to design a whole process. So in this case, for example, we have decision <laughs> flow chart for eating out. I'm hungry. Is there anything in the fridge? We have a diamond. Diamond means decision, yes or no. Then we go to the next step and so on until then we reach the final part. Okay. So we'll do a logical flow to see how we're going to reach the end. Okay. So in this case, they usually for processes in companies, we're going to mix this together with all the materials that we have okay then the materials let me do this better the materials the facilities and the human resources that we have and also i mean with the facilities we go together with understanding whether we have any inventory or not okay because a uh, I want to design a process to be optimal, but what happens if, for example, I am working on a just-in-time approach? Just-in-time approach means when I need it, I, I, I call for it. I don't have any inventory. So in this case, I have to design this process, the flowchart, in, in, and design it according to what, what materials I need or I have, and also whether I have the resources, the, process, the processes, and the machinery. So the machinery goes together also with the facilities, whether I have the machines available or not, right? Very good. So in this case, for example, well, we have this one, the time function mapping process. This is very similar to this one. The only difference is that we will have an axis that measures the time. So here, for example, it will be maybe one hour, maybe two hours, maybe three hours, etc., etc., etc. All these can be divided into days. So in this case, that's how we're gonna be looking at when we do things. It can be horizontal or it can be vertical. He says horizontal, but it can be in both ways. Okay, very good. So we have the process charts. So process charts also what we do here is uh, here we have for example let me use a line better we have for example in terms of days and also we have also the activities and then how they start to move from one side to the other okay this one goes the customer they for example order something order the product then sales process the order then production says which product has to be done. So in this case, for example, we're talking 12 days, 13 days, 14 days, 15 days, etc. I don't know. It depends depends on that or how many days it takes. No, for example, this one takes 12 days, another 12 days to produce it, another day to do on the plant, etc. Et so we are moving based on the time. Okay. If there's some times we need to see, for example, here goes from here to here but here returns why because maybe there's a different department that has to be different so here we start for example with the with the consumer but in the end we also end with the consumer because it's a cycle right if you think of this one it's a cycle where it moves to the production to the testing transportation but the transportation it goes back to the consumer so we have to think of this of designing this process optimally so that it takes the least time and we don't waste activities or resources good so we have also another process analysis which is the value stream mapping so in the value stream mapping we are looking more into where we can generate value in terms of time or in terms of resources. So in this case, for example, we list the resources that we have, how many operators we need, right? How many operators we need. Uh, we also 
look at how many we're looking to produce each day and we're also looking at a time frame so what i do is here i map the whole process it is more well it's a process flow also but we are looking more at activities activities then that generate the value so in this case activities that generate value and which activities generate waste remember waste are those activities that waste either time or resources so in this case when we have a good mapping we understand what's going on what passes through what goes first and where i can save or where i can do some improvements very good so now now for this one service blueprinting and i need all your attention here because this one we're going to do it for assignment so in this case what we're going to do is a service blueprint so uh how are we going to do oh, maybe let me put myself somewhere that i can that i can do the whole thing so in this case for example what we're going to do is design a service and making sure that it's error free and it's effective so here for example on this side on this side we have for example the level of service so we have level we have level this, this choke again <laughs> sorry i said shoot i didn't say any other bad word eh? so in this case we have level one level two and level three so in this case we have in level one is the customer is in control meaning this is the consumer requesting something so for example here the customer arrives for service so he is in control how long it takes mostly depends on him but you're gonna find a way to make it um how to say more efficient which way here for example we have physical attributes to support service so if you want the consumer to reach quickly and to make it within three minutes you have to have parking parking you have to sign everything that says like love it <laughs> so, I hate to be talking online. Sometimes it got, my mind goes off. It, it says, uh, I don't know, a lobby for con for attending requests is in the left side or to the right side. So you're going to make them uh, reach as, as quickly as it should be, right? The same thing, if there's any waiting room, make sure that is uh, that it has amenities or that the consumer doesn't go upset because they have you don't have Wi-Fi, you don't have anything in there waiting there and nobody attends them, nobody knows if they are there. That creates um, that creates somehow the, the customer to, to go impatient and you don't want that. I'm going to give you one example here. For example, when I go to, to fix my car, it's a Samsung. And then while you're waiting for, for the car, he, they, there's some massage chair, there's TV, there's juices, there's laptops, etc. Well, not laptops, but computers, you can free Wi-Fi, etc. So anyways, so in this case, for this to happen, again, for this to happen in three minutes, you have to have that physical attributes. So in this case, for example, we have different physical attributes. You know? And I'm going to go to those later. So anyways, we have the level two. In the level two already shifts from just the customer in control, there's interaction. So in this frame in this step you will see that mostly is communication there's mostly communication within the two of them okay here is just the consumer on this step there's just a consumer and this step it is only the service provider okay so it passes from the consumer says the consumer and the service provider interact and then only the service provider works on its own okay very good so in this case for example we have let's go here warm greeting and obtain service request okay 
So in this case, there's a communication. I need to know what kind of request you are looking for. So in this case, we do, is it a standard request? And we have a diamond, it's a decision, yes or no. So in this case, is it, if it's a standard request, yes, then I'll just pass to perform the service, okay? Okay, very good. But also I need an approval, I forgot here. I need an approval. So if it's yes or no, it says, okay. In this case, you have a standard request. You need an oiling for your car. Mm, okay, that's gonna cost you $300 and it's gonna take me, it's gonna take me, I don't know, depending on the time, 20 minutes. Do you want it? Yes, of course. Then I take it, then I prepare it. Then again, I pass to be on control because that's only something I will do. And then if this one, if they say, no, I don't want to do it, politely, I close the sale and I say, well, okay, well, if you want, maybe you can think about it and you can go back home. Uh, here again, it's part of a good service to do a right closing because you say you don't want to shut the consumer and say, ah, okay, you don't want it, so be good. Okay, bye. No, okay, maybe you want to think about it and if you want to come later or perhaps there's cheaper options by doing half of it and then we start the, the process again. So in this case, it goes to the process finishes. Oh, yeah. The process finishes. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The process finishes because they are leaving, they are departing, okay? So in this case, uh, you see, because they didn't accept the process, they, it goes polite, but it is, it, is, it is, right? So in this case, we have, a, um, when we do this process, when we already pass the parking and everything, we have to go to this stage, which is the service diagnosis. So in this case, for example, what I have here is a, um, I have, uh, sorry guys, but this is very hard to be working with the slides. So in this case, for example, things that need to be there, the employee appearance and forms. If you wanna provide a good service, you have to provide, provide the tangibles. So in this case, if I want to determine uh, what kind of service can be provided, I have a checklist. The car has this, yes. The car has no, the customer wants this, yes. The customer wants no, Yo, I have a checklist. So based on that checklist, I already can provide a cost, right? Immediately, I can say, okay, I checked it and based on, your, based on what we check now, it's gonna be $300, $200, $100. It's already stated. So that creates already a good service because it's a tangible. So in this case, also the employee appearance that gives a tangible as well. That is like, who's going to provide the service? This guy, hey, you see a bad guy with just his shirt or you see a guy with the uniform and you think like, oh, this, this could be a good service. I'm willing to pay for it because if they already have a good uniform that is clean and neat, I expect already the service to be good, right? So anyways, so in this case, like I said, we have this one. A, and I'm going to talk about the polka yokes in, the, in, the, in, this, in this case to, to think to, to happen. So in this case, for example, well, then let's talk about the poke yokes now. So in this case, for example, there's poke yokes, right? So poke yoke can be bell in the driveway in case customer arrives. So it's, we're making sure that we notice them. So it's a foolproof thing. If I open the door, it's like, how come you didn't? Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't tell you because you were not there. No, it's a foolproof because it sounds, make a sound, you are there, you must be noticed, right? If customers remains in the work area, offer coffee and reading material in waiting rooms, so the same thing, I have a facility that makes them comfortable. So just offer it. You already have it. It's a good service. In this case, for example, in the polka yoke, in the service diagnosis, a, uh, this uh, conduct dialogue with customer to identify customer expectation and assure customer acceptance. So it, it must be part of the training. So when you design the service, you have to design rules for uh, for training the employees in the way they're going to behave, right? So 
Again, we have different poke yolks are, are along along the along the service. Remember, a poke yolk is a tool that we use to make sure that something happens in an effective way, right? And we don't make mistakes. So, anyways, so here we have again level three. Open. See, <laughs> I'm so sorry about it, but it, like I said, it's not easy to do. So in this case, we have the level three. So services removed from the customer control and interaction. So that is mainly to us. So we perform the work and here we have to address also whether we have any waiting list. We have to understand what are the facilities that we have. And as we spoke on the previous unit, we have to see um, we have to design the process to say arrival of the car, check up. Maybe while I am already attending him, maybe I'm already checking the car in some certain way or I'm already opening the window so I maximize the time. So in this case, like I said, this one is work. Perform various work, various. Again, you may have an estimated, you may not, but it's better to generate estimates or not in case you're not sure. Okay, maybe you say to the consumer, you need to come back in two hours. That's somehow the adequate time that we have. And then, of course, like I said, because if it's a cycle, then we go from here to here already. We have, we notify them that the car is ready. What kind of poker yoke you can have? Maybe you already designed that you had to have the customer phone number. So you send them an SMS or a cacao talk, or whatever is it. And they said, and then they pay they they pay oh again <laughs> they pay they pay and they leave okay so it's a cycle so again every part of the process you're gonna be dealing with everything so when we talk about this again there's physical attributes you're going to be doing for homework, for, for assignment, this one. doesn't matter if you do it well or not. What are the physical attributes? Okay, you, you have forms, you have computers, you have uniforms. What are you going to make to design it better? Then part of the interaction here, level one, two, three, in which one, in which one you are in control, in which one you are in between, and which one is, uh, a, which one, the customer is in control, Communication, I'm in control as a service provider and how it goes, okay? Very good. And think of polka jokes, which is our tools that will ensure that the customer or the service is provided in the adequate way, okay? Here, for example, very simple polka joke that they, some, the, some, some cafe shops do. Uh, they don't want... The, the 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 customer the customer the the service provider or the cashier to give away free coffees or steal the money so they put there a poker joke that says if the customer if the if the if the cashier doesn't give you your receipt then you are entitled for the free coffee so in this case um the customer will always be requesting for uh, will 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 say ah you didn't give me my receipt so it's free so in this case, uh, it generates a security for the company that the receipt will all be, be issued, okay? Because in the end, you have to be accountable for how many free coffees you gave and then uh, it becomes a poca yoke. It's an action or a tool that will help that ensure that the receipt is given at all times. Okay, very good. Now, let's see. So... Finally, we go to the next slide. I, I click it so many times, but I was never moving forward. So in this case, we have, again, the service can be classified into four quadrants based on the degree of labor and customization. So in this case, for example, we have degree of labor, how specialized it can be, and the degree of customization, right? So for example, in this case, we have, for example, commercial banking or into private banking, right? So in this case, the degree of labor is high, but it's still mass service, but professional service already this one, the private banking is already into high customization because it focuses specifically on your finances or your business, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And so we have many examples in here, right? We can see all of them. You can read them on your own. 
And then let's talk about areas of service productivity techniques for doing it. So in this case, for example, we have separation. Uh, for example, in a bank, when you know customers opening an account, boom, you stream them line, the streamline them to one counter. Here, for example, in Korea, that doesn't happen. Separation in the bank, you can go and open an account and it, it takes a lot of time. So actually, that's something that Korean banks should do, just a separate corner, just for opening, closing accounts and doing some special things. But here in the counter, they do it. So that's counterproductive. And that's why you may take a long time in the bank in Korea. You also have the service productivity, self-service or kiosks where you can already do click, 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 click. And then uh, you, can, you can do it on your own. Uh, postponement. Uh, this one, for example, um, you... Let's look, let's look at, for example, at the McDonald's one more time. The hamburger, pretty much all the components are the same, but the final product is just a final assembly is different. So in this case, we can say as a postponement. Uh, we have a focus. In this case, also McDonald's work in that because they have very limited menu and they just exchange all the materials back and forth to create different hamburgers, but pretty much they are very similar. We talked about the modular module um modular selection of service or modular production. Like I said, we have maybe five, 50 to 60% of the, of the product in a module. And then we just add the last modules in the very end as part of the separation or postponement also. Automation, in this case, we also have, for example, services that are automated already. I go back again to the McDonald's. In this case, for example, we have the machine guns that have the right amount of ketchup and that's it. The scheduling, we have the scheduling of personnel. You want a service to be more productive, you will schedule all the people that you have and as well as train them. Here I can give you, for example, the case of uh, when I used to work for the call center for American Airlines. In this case, the scheduling was on that majority of the employees are working in the daytime when we have when we receive the most calls, but the lunchtime, we don't give them all the lunchtime at the same time. We have a step. So you start at 12, you start at 12.10, you start at 12.30. So we always ensure that there's no lines empty. All right. And the same as the training, we have a training. You have to say, uh, thank you for calling American Lines. How can I help you? It is a train is a must and improves the service and of course makes it more productive. We train them to finalize a call in less than three minutes and we will monitor that every single month, meaning that the average of your call should not be more than that. Maybe, yeah, there's some calls that have larger, longer problems, but in general, you train them to do uh, the, the, the sales and everything in a very specific way. For example, for us, we do the reservation. And then let's say, for example, they call to ask for a price of a flight between Seoul and Tokyo. No, you say $232. And they go like, uh, so for how many people would you like to make the reservation? They got shocked uh, for, for two. What are the names of the customers? This one and this one. They didn't realize the reservation is done. So rather than saying, would you like to make the reservation? No, mm, lost. So again, this part of the training and how to make it the service more, more productive. So in this case, also, we can talk of process redesign. The, the, um, the, when we're talking about operations managers, they have to redesign many products and services so that processes and services so that they are optimal. So in this case, um, you're going to, in your assignment, precisely, you're going to think of a current service or a current product that, well, service, process, product, service and process that you uh, experience very often and how would you make it more effective? So you have to think and, and how you're going to do it so it becomes very, very effective. And perhaps, of course, uh, you will think of the timings in a in, in, in an imaginative way because you don't have the real times but um, try to make it as effective as possible so anyways that's it for this week uh, if you have any questions which probably you will let me know again use the cacao talk make sure that you're efficient with your questions because many of you have the same questions and it's better to answer just at once again operations management thank you so much and i'll see you next week